Welcome to session two. In this presentation, we will discuss steps to solving a medical coding exam case study. But first, I want to introduce you to the team. First up, Mr. Sandeep. Mr. Sandeep coming to you live from Abu Dhabi. He is an AMCI co-lead instructor. Next up, Miss Eva coming to you live from the state of Florida. She is also a co-lead instructor and the intern coordinator. And finally, myself, Mrs. J, I'm the curriculum director at AMCI. Now, let's meet the AMCI interns. We have Miss Anubama, followed by Miss Carla, Miss Courtney, Miss Dolly, Miss Vivian, and Miss Melissa. Oh. Goals of the presentation present to you digestive system scenarios. Now let's talk about how to solve a multiple choice case study scenario the AMCI way for the board exam. This is how we do it. We teach you to highlight your key terms and this key on the right tells you the colors that you should use and for what. A yellow highlighter should be used for diagnoses, all diagnoses, signs and symptoms. The green will be for procedure. So if you have a green highlighter, the green will be used to highlight only procedures and pink, these are inclusive or bundled items, all right? Once you've done your highlighting, you're gonna have to document your inventory. That's your procedures, diagnoses, and select a primary code. Which diagnosis is primary? Which procedure is primary? Then you're gonna review all pertinent guidelines and finally, the code that best matches your inventory list is often the correct code or a code that is pertinent to a guideline that will be your best code. All right, so here are some do nots. When you're highlighting, you can kind of get discombobulated. So we've compiled some things that you don't even have to highlight. Number one, don't highlight things observed by the physician because you cannot code for them. Number two, don't highlight closures. If a provider or surgeon is closing up a surgical site, there's no need to highlight it. However, if it involves a skin procedure or skin defect closure, you may definitely have to code that. So if it's closing a surgical site other than skin defects or wounds or lesions, you do not code it or highlight it. Also, you don't highlight bleed control, hemostasis, because that's pretty customary and it's bundled into the procedure code. You don't highlight drains, irrigation of the surgical site. Nope. And you don't highlight installation and removal of clamps and trocars because that these are used to open up or maintain the surgical or operative site so the physician can view what they're doing particularly if it's an open procedure also you don't highlight dressings and finally you do not highlight surgical risks now that we've gotten that out of the way i think you're ready to get started and I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Sandeep. All right, Mr. Sandeep, take it away. Portion, uh, next portion will be a digestive system. This must be a little bit much, a little bit easier as compared to cardiovascular scenarios. Okay, we are having our first scenario, and I would like to invite Ms. Anu to read out the scenario for us. Ms. Anu Pama, stage is yeah. all yours. Okay. Uh, first, the answer is yay. 
K two one point nine. B four three one nine one. K two one point nine. C four four three six zero. K two one point nine. D four three two zero zero. K two one point nine. The scenario is extent of examination upper gastrointestinal endoscopy. Reasons for examination: gastro esophageal reflux disease. Description of procedure: informed consent was obtained with the benefits, risk, including the risk of perforation and alternatives to the upper GI endoscopy were explained. The patient agreed to proceed. No contraint. No contraindications were noted on physical exam. Anesthesia was administered by the ICU staff. See anesthesiologist report. Monitored anesthesia care was administered by the anesthesia team. The procedure was performed with the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. The instrument was inserted through the mouth to the second part of the duodenum. The patient tolerated the procedure well. There were no complication. The heart rate was normal. Oxygen saturation and the skin color were normal. Upon discharge from the endoscopy area, the patient will be recovered per established procedures and protocols. Findings: The esophagus was examined and no abnormalities were seen. The gastroesophageal junction, upper level of gastric folds. Was located forty centimeter from the incisors. The stomach was examined and no abnormalities were seen. The small bowel was examined and no abnormalities were seen. Coders, here the time starts now. That's two and a half minutes, coders. I was looking into the chats. 
Okay, so it's a relief to the eyes after the last three long scenarios. Once you see a small one, but coders don't get overwhelmed by these long scenarios. As we say, uh, once you get your procedure inventories and the diagnosis inventory, uh, all you have to do is code the set of one which best matches your inventory list. So uh, just focus on that. Don't get overwhelmed when you whenever you see a long operative uh, procedure. Sometimes the procedure perform will be uh, very straightforward. Okay, you know the first scenario in the digestive system. Thank you, Miss Anu, uh, for reading that scenario for us. The extent of the examination, the procedure performed is a gastrointestinal endoscopy. Okay. And the reason for the examination is a uh, gastroesophageal uh, reflex uh, disease, GERD. A monitored anesthesia care was administered. Patient was placed in a left lateral uh, uh, decubitus position uh, and the instrument was inserted through the mouth to the second part of the duodenum. The findings was esophagus was examined and there was no abnormality seen. Stomach was also examined and small bowel was also examined. So the correct answer to this question is going to be option A. So Codas, what do you think this is a tutor or a router? Yes, you can see the endoscope is uh, going by mouth, uh, so it's a router. Yes, you uh, all said it correct. So let's move along. This is a procedure inventory. Estrophago gastro is the one with, uh, procedure which is performed, which otherwise we call them EGD. And the diagnosis inventory, we are having a gastroesophageal reflex disease. And these are the code option. Let's start the process of elimination. Let's look option D for 3200, which is coding for esophagoscopy, flexible transoral. Uh, now, of course, you can have a, a forensic look into this. Uh, uh, what is the procedure performed? What do you think is the procedure performed? 43200 is coding for an esophagoscopy procedure. And in an esophagoscopy procedure, endoscope will be inserted, and only the portions up to the stomach will be uh, observed, will be monitored. Like uh, the, post, uh, the portions along the esophagus will be um, checked. So this will be an esophagoscopy. And let's see what uh, all has been examined in our scenario. In the finding portion, you can see the esophagus was examined. The stomach was examined, the small bubble was examined, and in this particular portion, you can see instrument was inserted through the mouth to the second portion of the duodenum. So uh, if you remember in our classes, we said it is not the scope which we are coding for. It is still which portion uh, the ex uh, has been examined is what we are coding for. So here they have uh, reached till the second part of the duodenum. So it's not uh, till esophagus. We have reached till the duodenum and till the second portion of the duodenum and it has not crossed the duodenum as well. So esophagoscopy is not the procedure performed. So the code 43200 is wrong answer. Let's look into 43191 which is coding for esophagoscopy once again. The difference between 43200 and 43191 is that one is coding for a flexible, uh, the other one is coding for a trans, uh, rigid one. So flexible endoscope will be are made of movable and easy uh, to manipulate tubes, which are used to uh, view the internal organs, while a rigid endoscope are basically used to view the organs along the vertical axis. So that's a difference between uh, these two codes. And anyway, the endoesophagoscopy is not the procedure performed that eliminates option B as well. The remaining two options are option C and option A. The option C is coding for 434360, which is a small intestinal endoscopy, enteroscopy beyond the second portion of the duodenum, including ileum diagnostic, including the collection of the specimens by brushing, washing, when performed. 
So you can see here till which portion they have examined. It's a small decennial endoscopy or endoscopy beyond the second portion of the duodenum. And from our procedure, we can see till where the endoscopy has been went and where till where they have examined is, is from mouth to the second portion of the duodenum. It hasn't crossed the second portion of the duodenum. It hasn't reached ileum. So this is wrong answer because this is coding for beyond the second portion of the ileum. The correct answer will be option A for three, two, three, five, which will be coding for esophago gastro deodonoscopy, flexible transoral diagnostic. So as I said, you can see the endoscope will be inserted. We'll be seeing the esophagus stomach and then it will be reaching the duodenum where it has gone till the second portion of the duodenum. So that will be esophago gastro deodonoscopy three portions. That's why I said it is EGD. Esophago gastro deodonoscopy. How, do, how are you feeling about this one, Codus? Let me have a look into chat. I'm not sure. Uh, do you need to? You would never do a SX uh, with an endoscopy. I'm not sure what SX uh, is. Please uh, let me know in the chat what SX so that I can answer that. I think, uh, yeah, uh, it's just because we have went through a few uh, long scenarios. A rigid versus flexible scope. So rigid, uh, it's uh, the kind of material which are made up of like flexible endoscopy. As I said, uh, it will be made up of more uh, movable and as the name itself, it will be much more flexible so that it can reach more uh, portion while rigid will be basically uh, to view the organs which is along the vertical axis. It will be rigid one. The name states itself. Okay, so I will just uh, move along to the next scenario. I hope uh, this one was clear for everyone. Okay, the next one I would invite, I think it's Miss Courtney once again. Miss Courtney. Right, yes. Okay, so what are the CPT and ICD 10 CM codes reported? A45330, K62.89, B45337, K62.89, C45300, K62.89, D45120, K62.89. Extent of examination, proximal sigmoid colon, reasons for examination, proctitis, postoperative assessment, proctitis. Description of procedure. Informed consent was obtained with the benefits, risks, including the risk of perforation and alternatives to the sigmoidoscopy explained. The patient agreed to proceed. No contraindications were noted on physical exam. Patient was re-examined and no interval changes were noted from the preoperative history and physical. After being placed on the table, patient identification was verified prior to the procedure. Immediately prior to sedation for endoscopy, the patient's ASA classification was class two, mild systemic disease. Monitored anesthesia care, MAC, was administered by the anesthesia team. The quality of the prep was adequate. Prior to the exam, a digital exam was performed and it was unremarkable. The procedure was performed with the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. The sigmoid scope was inserted to the proximal sigmoid colon. In the rectum, a retroflex was performed. The withdrawal time from the proximal sigmoid colon was eight minutes. The patient tolerated the procedure well. There were no complications. The heart rate was normal. The oxygen saturation and skin color were normal. IV moderation sedation was administered under direct supervision of the physician. Upon discharge for the endoscopy area, the patient will be recovered per established procedures and protocols. Findings in the rectum mild segmental inflammation with arrhythmia was seen. There was no mucosal bleeding. All right, coders, your time starts now.
Okay, coders, that's two and a half minutes, and I see a lot of correct answers for this scenario. And if you haven't got this one correct, this is going to be a teachable moment. Let's solve this one. Thank you, Miss Courtney, once again. Uh, so the correct answer to the question is going to be option A. Coders, if you want to take a screenshot, go ahead and take the screenshot of the scenarios. The extent of the examination, proximal sigmoid colon. And we have the post-operative diagnosis, which is a proctitis that will be taken as a diagnosis. Um, and then what we're having, the patient uh, was placed on the table, the prior sedation, immediately prior sedation uh, for endoscopy was given. Uh, the patient is an ASA classification, uh, was class two, mild systemic disease, MAC, monitored anesthesia care was administered, and the digital exam was performed as well. The sigmoidoscope was inserted to the proximal sigmoid colon. A retro reflex, a retroflex was performed, uh, and withdrawal time was around, was around eight minutes. Findings in the rectum: mild segmental inflammatory erythema was seen. As I said, the post-operative diagnosis will be the one which we will take. That will be proctitis. So. Do you remember this chart coders from our CPT book? This is a colonoscopy decision tree. So uh, if we, uh, there are two branches for this. One is for the diagnostic procedure. One is for the therapeutic procedures. So if the scope has not reached uh, the splenic venture uh, uh, flexure, we would code for a flexible sigmoidoscopy. Uh, and if it is beyond the splenic flexure, but not to the cecum. We'll be coding for the colonoscopy with a 53 modifier. And if it is reaches to the cecum, we will be coding with a colonoscopy code without any modifier. And the therapeutic uh, scopy, we are having a uh, one code. If it is not reaching the splenic flexure, we will be code for the flexible sigmoidoscopy. And if it is reaching beyond the splenic, if it crosses the splenic flexure, but not to the cecum, we will be coding the colonoscopy scope uh, codes with a modified 52. And if it is reaching up to the cecum, we'll be coding for colonoscopy without any modifier. I just want to bring this up. Uh, just want to give a quick refresh, refresher. Okay. This is our scenario and the procedure inventory is a uh, sigmoidoscopy perform. The diagnosis inventory we are having proctitis. So this is what the procedure performed. They have inserted the uh, scope, sigmoidoscope, and it has reached till the proximal sigmoid colon. And they have done a retro uh, reflex, which is just a turning uh, of the scope in order to see the surroundings and all. And they will withdraw the scope afterwards. This is a procedure which is performed. And Codus, is this a router or a tutor? Yes. I don't the money. Yes, tutor. This is a tutor. Correct answer, Codus. Okay, coming back to the coding. Once again, let's start the process of elimination. Option D, 45120, which is coding for proctectomy. Is this the one procedure performed, coders? Cross-check the one which best matches your procedure inventory. Is the proctectomy the procedure performed? No. We had a sigmoidoscopy performed. That's the wrong answer. Straight away, option D is wrong. Yes, let's look into the next one. Option C for five three double zero, which is a proctos proctosigmoidoscopy rigid diagnostic with or without the collection of the specimen by brushing, washing, uh, or washing. Is this a sigmoidos a proctosigmoidoscopy perform? Nope. This is a sigmoidoscopy which is performed. So in a proctosigmoidoscopy, the regions which will be examined will be the rectum and a lower portion of the sigmoid colon.
but in our scenario, the proximal portion of the sigmoid colon was uh, uh, was observed. So, in a, a difference between the proctoid sigmoidoscopy and a sigmoidoscopy is that in sigmoidoscopy, we'll be examining rectum, sigmoid, sigmoid colon, and, and the descending colon as well. So, entire sigmoid colon will be uh, exam examined in the sigmoidoscopy. So, that's why option C is wrong. Let's look in the next one, option B for 5337, which is coding for sigmoidoscopy flexible with decompression, including the placement of a decompression tube when performed. There was no decompression tube perform, uh, inserted or no, neither uh, the decompression was not performed. So, so 45337 is also the wrong answer. The correct answer is 45330 which is coding for sigmoidoscopy, flexible diagnostic, including the collection of the specimens by brushing, washing or washing when performed. That was pretty straightforward scenario, wasn't it Coder? So any questions on this one? Yes, I saw most of them has got the correct answer for this one. So digestive system was pretty cool, I think, for this study session. Come back to the cardiovascular system. So, okay. So if you want to take the screenshot, go ahead, coders, take the screenshot. We got around 10 more minutes. I think we will pull out one more scenario for the class today, and then we will wind it up. So are you ready for a final scenario, coders? Yes, that's the spirit, that's the spirit, and let's do it. So for the final scenario, I would like to uh, invite Miss Carla. Miss Carla, take it away. What are the CPT and ICD-10 CM codes reported? Answer A, 44227, Z43.2, Z85.048. Answer B, 44620. Z43.2, 785.048. Answer C, 44626, Z43.2, Z85.048. And answer D, 44625, Z43.2, and Z850.048. Preoperative diagnosis, history of rectal carcinoma, postoperative diagnosis, history of rectal carcinoma, procedure performed, closure of loop ileos ileostomy with ileostomy with small bowel re resection and inter, inter, inter <laughs> this word, excuse me guys, interentrostomy inter with intraoperative flexible sig sigmoidoscopy. Description of procedure. After indication of adequate general endotracheal anesthesia, the patient was carefully positioned in the supine modified lithomy position in Allen stirrups. Great care was taken to pad and protect all areas of potential bodily injury. Digital rectal examination revealed a widely patent circum circumferential intact pouch anal anastomosis within one centimeter of the dentate, dentate line. Flexible sigmoidoscopy was performed revealing healthy pink mu mucosa. The abdomen was prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion in the usual sterile matter, manner and a peristomal incision was made and carried down sharply into the peritoneal cavity. Metic meticulous hemostasis was obtained with electrical cautery. A 360 degree subfascial mobilization was undertaken until approximately 40 centimeters of each the efferent and efferent limb reached above the skin in the tension 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 free matter. Betadine was insufflated 
down each limb to verify that no enterotomies or seromite were made. The mesentery was scored and the vessels were divided with a 10 millimeter ligature impact. The bowel was circumferentially cleared of fat proximally and distally and and even and each end was divided with a GIA 100 millimeter stapling device with blue cart cartridge. The field was protected with blue towels and an antimicentric antimicentric border of each stable line was excised. A side-to-side -side functional end-to-end -end anastomosis was fashioned with a GIA 100 millimeters stapling device. The staple line was reinforced with hemostasis with 3-0 PDS two suture were necessary and an efferent limb was secured to the efferent limb with 3-0 PDS two seromuscular Limbert type sutures. After verification of the meticulous hemostasis, the apical enterotomy was secured with a GIA 100 millimeter strapping device. The anastomosis was healthy pink and widely patent and circumferentially um, intact and easily returned into the peritoneal cavity. After copious irrigation and verification of meticulous hemostasis. All right, coders, you have two and a half minutes and your time starts now. Let's get it. Let's code. Coders, that's time. Uh, thank you, Ms. Carla, for reading scenario for us. Yes, as you said, those terms are really, really difficult. Those surgical terms do get me wind up at times. So, uh, 
I know it's time and I want to get this uh, done quickly. Uh, so go, Codes, please go ahead. If you haven't uh, completed, please go ahead and take a screenshot uh, and you can work on it later on if you want to. And from the chat, I can see like what a way to end this scenario. You guys are phenomenal. Let's solve the scenario code. So you have a post-operative diagnosis of history of rectal carcinoma, and the procedure performed is a closure of the loop ileostomy with a bowel, small bowel resection and enteroendrostomy with an intraoperative flexible sigmoscopy. And endotracheal anesthesia was given. Patient was placed in a supine modified lithiotomy position. A parastomal incision was made. It was done uh, sharply to the peritoneal cavity. And betadine was insufflated down each limb to verify that no enterotomies or serotomies were present. The bubble was circumferentially cleared of fat uh, approximately and distally and each uh, end was divided with a GIA 100 mm uh, stapling device. A side-to-side -side functional end-to-end -end anastomosis was achieved with the GIA 100 mm stapling device and the correct answer is going to be option D. I hope you have taken the screenshot and I'm moving on to the next screen. And this is uh, what the procedure performed. An ileostomy patient was having an ileostomy. The ileostomy is a stoma which is constructed to bring the end or the loop of small intestine out uh, onto the surface of the skin uh, due to some surgical uh, related procedures. Here in this case, patient was having a history of a cancer. So maybe because of that, he has undergone any procedures and an ileostomy was created. And the intestinal waste actually passes out of the ileostomy and it is collected in an external ostomy system, which is placed next to the ostomy opening. So here, let me show. Uh, this is uh, an ileostomy and you can see the uh, we have ileostomy back and all the waste products will be, co uh, will be collected through this and this is an ileostomy and the procedure which is performed is actually a closure of an ileostomy and an enteroenterostomy is also uh, performed. So what is an enteroenterostomy? This is an anastomosis between one part of the small bowel and the other part of the small bowel. So and closure will be performed here and the remaining small bubble will be connected to each other. In that way, the closure of ileostomy will be done and the intestine will be back to the normal. So that's what the procedure performed. Let's move on. And here we go. This is how enteroendrostomy will be performed. They will cut out this particular portion and they will uh, reconnect it. Okay, coming back to the coding portion, select the code that best matches your inventory. Once again, I have to uh, emphasize on that. So the procedure inventory, we are having a closure of loop ileostomy, which I said, with a small bowel resection. That's how they close the ileostomy. And then later on, second part is an enteroenterostomy, which is a connection between the two bowels. Uh, small intestines was done. And in the procedure inventory, we have closure of loop ileostomy along with the history of rectal carcinoma. Let's have a look into the code for 4227 option A, which is coding for a laparoscopy surgical closure of enterostomy, large intestine or large or small intestine with a resection and anastomosis. This looks like a pretty good uh, answer, but you can see it was not a laparoscopic uh, procedure. We have a parastomal incision performed. This was an open procedure we just performed. That is why code option A is wrong. Yes, we eliminated option A in that manner. Let's look into the next one. Okay, before that, I have done some churning for the remaining co uh, codes. 44620 is coding for uh, a closure of enterostomy of a large or small intestine. 
and 44625 is coding for closure enterostomy of large or small intestine along with the resection and anastomosis for uh, the regions other than colorectal. And 44626 is coding for closure endostomy, large or small uh, intestine with resection and anastomosis of a colorectal uh, portion. And then let's look what 44620 is coding for. 44620 is coding for closure of endostomy. What this code is lacking is this code is not coding for. Uh, for enter, uh, enteroenterostomy. This is only coding for closure of uh, enterostomy. The, I'm sorry, this is only coding for an enterostomy uh, closure, and this is not coding for a small bowel resection. We had a small bowel resection along with the uh, closure of the ileostomy loop. So that's why this one is wrong. Let's look into the next one, 44626, which is coding for closure of enterostomy along with resection and clo uh, resection and colorectal anastomosis. So uh, the difference between the option C and option D is that option C is uh, coding for uh, colorectal anastomosis. If you remember the diagram, we had a uh, uh, anastomosis between the small intestine. It was not for a coro uh, colorectal anastomosis. And that is the reason why option C is wrong. Well, option D is the correct, which is coding for 44625, which will be closure of enterotomy, enterostomy, large or small intestine with resection of resection and anastomosis other than colorectal. Is that clear coders? Because I was doing a little bit quick. As I said, it's already time. I don't want you people to sit uh, more than the schedule time. So colorectal is a, a, a particular portion of where the anastomosis was performed. We had an anastomosis uh, for a small intestine. It was not colorectal region. That is why we choose 44625. Okay, coders, I think that's our schedule time. And if you have any questions on these scenarios, please uh, let me know, please uh, email uh, me. Uh, so next week we will be covering remaining portions. We will be adding the urinary system as well. So thank you for staying with us. Thank you, team, and thank you, coders. Hope you a great week ahead. Wish you a great week ahead. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep, for those AMCI amazing and awesome explanations. Miss Eva, for being the orchestrator and conductor of the best interns on the planet. Yes, I said it. Miss Melissa, Anubama, Courtney, Carla, let's get it, let's code, Dolly and Miss Vivian. And let's not forget our interns in the chat led by Miss Biji. And you, the students, you all are simply the best and we appreciate you. And we will see you next time for more great scenarios. You don't want to miss it. And thank you for participating in the AMCI Medical Coding course. Until next time. Mm -hmm.